Good morning, friend of mine. I am Pastor Hugh McKenzie, a pastor from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. A happy day to you and your loved ones. Every morning we share two chapters from the audio Bible narrated by Alexander Scorby and a devotional from one of the chapters shared. May you be spiritually blessed and refreshed as you listen. Please share the presentations so that someone else may be blessed. May God continue to bless you and your family as you listen every day. God bless you. The Book of Daniel, Chapter 1 In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim king of Judah came Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim king of Judah into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God, and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel, and of the king's seed, and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored, and skillful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge, and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar, and to Hananiah of Shadrach, and to Mishael of Meshach, and to Azariah of Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king who hath appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse liking than the children which are of your sort? Then shall ye make me endanger my head to the king. Then said Daniel to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat, and water to drink. Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat, and as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So he consented to them in this matter, and proved them ten days. And at the end of ten days their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Thus Melzar took away the portion of their meat, and the wine that they should drink, and gave them pulse. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now, at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar, and the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. And Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. The hymn writer declares, O God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. A wonderful day or a restful night to you, wherever you are. God is indeed a God who is worthy of our highest praise. He is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and of great kindness, keeping mercy unto thousands, and forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. I trust you had a refreshing weekend, and that you are energized and ready to face this new work week. Today we are focusing on Daniel chapter 1 again, and we are reading Daniel chapter 1 and verse 1. The Bible says, In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem, and besieged it. Again, in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, 
came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. Today's message is entitled, Lessons from a King, Part 1. Lessons from a King, Part 1. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus we come asking that your Holy Spirit will impress these truths on our hearts. For Christ's sake, Amen. The story is told of a good farmer who loved the Lord and believed in stewardship. He was generous indeed and was asked by his friends why he gave so much and yet remained so prosperous. We cannot understand you, his friends said. Why, you seem to give more than the rest of us, and yet you always seem to have greater prosperity. Oh, said the farmer, that is easy to explain. You see, I keep shoveling into God's bin, and God keeps shoveling more and more into mine, and God has the bigger shovel. God certainly shoveled a lot into King Nebuchadnezzar's life. Nebuchadnezzar II, the second king of the Neo-Babylonian Empire from 605 to 562 BC, played a significant role in biblical history. He is especially known for his conquest of Jerusalem and for the rebuilding of Babylon. The many inscriptions of Nebuchadnezzar that have come to light during the last century speaks almost exclusively of his building activities at Babylon and other places. Only a few historical texts deal with the events of his reign as king. Until 1956, almost all historical knowledge about Nebuchadnezzar was obtained from the Bible and from the writings of the historian Josephus, but the tablets of the Babylonian Chronicle that were discovered in 1956 covered the first 11 years of Nebuchadnezzar's reign. He is mentioned first in the Babylonian Chronicle as commander of a separate army during the 19th regnal year of his father, Nebopolazar. Two years later, in the spring of 605 BC, the ailing Nebuchadnezzar stayed behind and sent Nebuchadnezzar out to fight against the Egyptians who held the strong city of Carchemish on the upper Euphrates. In the ensuing battle, friend of mine, the young crown prince Nebuchadnezzar II defeated the Egyptians and destroyed Carchemish. Nebuchadnezzar pursued the fleeing Egyptian forces to the district of Hamath and in a second battle crushed them completely, then conquered the whole Syria-Palestine area. Now, it must have been on his way southward that he accepted the surrender of Jerusalem and took Jewish hostages, among whom were Daniel and his three friends. According to Daniel chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. Now, friend of mine, Daniel chapter 1 to 4 describes the experiences of Daniel on the king Nebuchadnezzar and tells us how the king became acquainted with the Hebrew religion and the God of Daniel. Most of Nebuchadnezzar's life in the Bible can be described by three words. Most of Nebuchadnezzar's life in the Bible can be described by three words. Today, we will look at the first of the three words, then the other two words on the following broadcasts. The first word that describes Nebuchadnezzar's life was prosperity. Prosperity. The first word is prosperity. Prosperity is the condition of being successful or thriving, especially economic well-being. Prosperity is the condition of being successful or thriving, especially economic well-being. The Bible says the Lord gave Nebuchadnezzar success and prosperity. 
The Bible is clear. Daniel chapter 1 verse 2 says, And the Lord gave, and the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hands with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. Additionally, as the terrible of the nations, as he is called in Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 7, as the terrible of the nations, it was given Nebuchadnezzar after years of patient and wearying labor to conquer the city of Tyre. Egypt also fell a prey to his victorious armies and as he added nation after nation to the Babylonian realm, he added more and more to his fame as the greatest ruler of the age. Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom was represented by gold in Daniel chapter 2. God declares in Jeremiah chapter 27 and verse 6, And now I have given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and the beast of the field have I given him also to serve him. O friend of mine, would God that every person and the political leader especially realize that God is the one who gives us success. We say that again. Would God that every person and every political leader realize that God is the one who gives us success. David declares in 1 Chronicles chapter 29 verses 11 and 12, he says, Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come of thee. Don't miss that. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all, and in thine hand is power and might, and in thine hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. Therefore, friend of mine, whatever level of success you have achieved, God in his mercy has directly or indirectly given it to you. We say that again. Therefore, friend of mine, whatever level of success we have achieved, God in his mercy has directly or indirectly given us success. Whether it is having a good education, a good family, a fancy house, a big bank account, or good health and strength, it is God who has given us these things. It was God who gave King Nebuchadnezzar success. It was God who gave Jerusalem into his hand. The Bible is clear. James chapter 1 verse 17 states, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. O oh, friend of mine, may we in gratitude for all God's blessings and the gifts declare in the words of the hymn, Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father. Praise Son. Praise Holy Ghost. May God bless you real good. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Father, we stretch our hands to thee. No other help we know if you withdraw yourself from us. Whither should we go? Thank you, dear Lord, for helping us to achieve whatever level of success in life. Thank you for being with us through the tough times in our journey to success. And Father, thank you for the assurance that we can call upon you to help us to achieve. For you said every good and every perfect gift comes from above. Be with those who will be graduating in August. Thank you, Lord, for giving them success. And may they remember to serve you faithfully as a result of your blessings. 
Remember Alyssa, Lord. Thank you that she will be one of those graduating. Thank you for giving her success. Bless her, Lord. Bless her academic life. Bless her relationship. And guide, Lord, so that your purpose for her life, whether academic or social, will be realized. With all those who have made prayer requests, dear Lord, we place them all in your hand. And we thank you in advance for hearing and answering our prayer on their behalf. And thank you, Lord, for granting us success. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.